Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, how should society respond to the rise of the sex trade? It's become so pervasive, it sometimes feels as if it's part of the mainstream culture. A new book by the feminist author Kat Banyard, Pimp State, raises some key questions, from whether it should be legal to pay for sex, to whether porn is warping the attitudes of a generation of boys. So she joins me now, along with Nikki Adams from the English Collective of Prostitutes. Uh, Kat, you argue that there's been a big increase in the number of men paying for sex. Why do you think that is? Well, during the 1990s, the number of men doubled to nearly one in ten men who pay for sex. In this the UK? Was, that's right. I mean, this was at the same time that we saw a general mainstreaming and expansion of the global sex trade. But crucially, because we can see that demand can grow, it can also shrink. So putting the lie to old adages like it's the oldest profession. Demand for the sex trade is not inevitable, but it requires us to tackle the sexist attitudes that underpin it. I'll come on to that, but why is it increasing? Well, uh, there is increased... I mean, the attitudes which uh, fuel it are being reinforced and that the sex trade pumps out many myths to uh, fuel that demand, such as prostitution is inevitable, that it's just ordinary work, and that by making it legal, brothels legal and pimping legal, you somehow make it safe. So, all in all, we've seen this surge and it's crucial that now, as a society, we tackle it. Nikki, but prostitution, sex work, call it what you will, needs to be tackled. Do you have any sympathy with that view, or is it boom time for you and your colleagues? Well, I wouldn't call it boom time, but I think there has probably been an increase in prostitution, but there's also been an increase in women's poverty. Austerity has particularly... all 70 to 80% of the austerity cuts have targeted women. We have women in our group who actually managed to get out of prostitution and have gone back into prostitution. We also have a lot of women who started but have been trapped in prostitution because of a criminal record. So you use those words, trapped and forced into prostitution, so you accept that sex work is not something that women want to be doing? In the same way as a lot of people don't like their... You know, like, I think 60% of the UK, pub, UK working population don't like their job. You know, they find their job exploitative, too lowly paid, uh, you know, zero-hour contracts have kind of come across the board. So only in that extent, when I say trapped, I mean that where women want to leave or not want to go into prostitution in the first place, you always look at the choices that are available. And in most cases, that's other low-wage and, low and exploitative work. And just... Sorry, well, let me just pick up on that point. Yeah. We'll come back to that. But no, no. Low-paid work, you know, is... You know, grind, is prostitution, is sex work any worse? Sexual exploitation is not a solution to poverty. And sex buyers are not just ordinary consumers. They're exploiters. When a man pays a, um, a woman to provide... to uh, perform sex acts on him, that money is not sort of coincidence. It's coercion. And a trade in which men pay to sexually access women's bodies is fundamentally incompatible with equality between women and men. But what so if you sex need... workers don't feel like that? I mean, sex workers don't see... Uh, prostitution as any more exploitative than other jobs and in some cases we actually go into sex work to to escape from the exploitation of other low-wage jobs and I think it's difficult for people like outside to look in and say well we judge you according to these standards without looking at the other choices that we're having to make I don't know why prostitution is seen as more exploitative than you know, begging or having to watch our children go without food. And that's the reality of many women in this society. We don't think it's a great job, but it's often the better choice out of a set of very bad choices. Nikki and her colleagues... Criminalisation doesn't help it. Nikki and her colleagues don't feel exploited. Well, there are many women who speak out about their experiences of abuse within the sex trade. And abuse international abuse, research though. that's been Look, done shows that 9 out of 10 women uh, in prostitution say they would like to get out but feel unable to do so, which is Ask why <laughs> the End Demand campaign, which is an alliance of organisations including Women's Aid and the M Violence Against Women Coalition are calling on the Home Affairs Select Committee led by Keith Baz uh, wait, to wait. recommend Sorry. that the government adopts a sex by law and finally starts to tackle the demand okay. that drives prostitution. I'll come and back to the, the legalisation, decriminalisation, all of that. But I mean, in Kat's book, she talks about Eastern Europeans working 16 hours a day, having to have sex with four men a night just to break even and pay their rent. 
That's exploitation. That is, is a very horrible situation. But what is going to improve the situation for those women? It's not going to be criminalising clients, which force us into isolated areas and prevent us working together for safety. I mean, that has to be the crucial thing. I mean, if, when you, how, no matter how you feel about prostitution, the question is, is what's actually going to help women in prostitution to improve their working conditions and get out? And it has been shown that decriminalisation does that. It's been tried in New Zealand. Oh, well, and it really let should on to that point. be... Well, the, implemented here. The women that you just mentioned were women in a legal brothel in Germany that I visited, and I went door no, to door in this multi-story brothel. It is. I went it's very different from decriminalisation. Not, not that kind New Zealand of doesn't actually have a so-called decriminalised regime because local authorities can put restrictions on where brothels operate. So but this distinction, which is often made between New Zealand and Germany, is, is false. The difference is that sex workers can actually work together. They can in they Germany. Can set up, they where, can set up their uh, own premises, illegal. but and they're registered in Germany. Going room to well, room in a brothel was. All women, who none of whom spoke German as a first language, and all of whom were very, very young. What about the German super brothels? I, the legalised system is a very problematic system. In Germany, it super sets up a two-tier system, system, two system where you can't work outside of those legalised areas. So it gives the bosses and the government enormous powers. In New Zealand, they did do something different. They decriminalised, they removed prostitution from the criminal law. They made a distinction between prostitution and violence. Violence okay. remained criminal. Very, very and it gave the workers OK, power. we're nearly out of time. Very briefly, are you just moralising? Are you a modern-day Mary Whitehouse? Look, opposing the sex trade is about opposing sexism, not sex. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Nikki Adams, Kat Banya, thank you very much for joining me. I've been